Uh, hello again, everybody on Skype. We got quite a little group there tonight, and I don't have a list, but it doesn't matter. It's people that love Jesus and are hungry for Jesus, and that's good enough for us. <clears throat> okay, so we were in the last class um, looking at um, both the story there of the prodigal son and how he put on things that the father said, you know, give him the best and all of this. It's very affirming, but it can also be affirming to our flesh. <laughs> That's why we need him within, <laughs> you know. And all of the blessings and all of those things, they're, they're there. I mean, if you want a real good study of what I'm talking about, go look at 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12, where it talks about that we're all members of the body and we all have gifts and we all have offices and we're all important and stuff. And then it starts talking about all the problems because people get puffed up over their office. And that, well, it does. It's just absolutely plain. And then it says, but I'll show you a more excellent way. In other words, it's saying, I just showed you all that. Now I'd like to show you the real way that I'd like for you to take, which is you, not you, but the love of God, which is, the, which is God, functioning in you to, to um, <clears throat> bless and to give and to not get puffed up and to not get hurt feelings, not get puffed up and not get hurt feelings. Well, those right there, just work on those for the next... 20 years without Christ as your life. <laughs> um, so, um, and then we did talk about uh, 1 Peter uh, 1, verses 2 and 3. But now I want to go back a little bit to the prodigal son. And I want to... Um, I want you to realize again that this prodigal son was born into the family. He was of the family. It was the father's son, but it wasn't the son that the father wanted out of him. Now, we've gone through that, and I hope you remember that. <clears throat> and so the process was that and this is where the change starts coming. We mentioned, we went into great detail last time about the father's face and seeing these things and, and looking into the face of the father and seeing the son. And all of that is very real. And it's something that we need to experience. Uh, it's the only thing that's, you know, going to start the process of breaking you from thinking about you and making you the center of everything. You know, when it's all said and done, it doesn't matter how much you're born again or whatever. The Father's plan, the eternal plan, is his son to be formed in you. Paul saw it and said, I travail in birth till Christ be formed in you. He saw it and wrote in Romans and said, you know, this that all things work together for good to those who are called, the, those who love God, who are called according to his purpose, that we might be conformed to the image of his son. And that's big stuff. And you go, well, Paul, why do you get so uptight and everything? We're all saved and we're all happy and everything. He's going because the father wants the son and because this is our place is to move forward with this and to, and to you know, like John the Baptist, I'm not him, but... I'm pointing to him. <laughs> but greater than that, that Christ be formed in us so that when we point, it has more than just an object in mind that we're seeking. <clears throat> the prodigal, notice I use, use the word the prodigal. The prodigal ate the sacrifice. Now, one of the areas that I still do want to get into will be well, I'm not going to say it yet because it is spoiled the surprise. <laughs> the prodigal ate the sacrifice. And if he never ate the sacrifice, he would, he would take the best and think he's the best. Instead of he's the sacrifice, instead of Jesus is the sacrifice, instead of he's sacrificed in, in Jesus, instead of he has 
you're going to eat this. It's not just Jesus died for you on a cross. You are going to go after this to such a degree that you're going to put it in you. And when you do, when you get this in you, you're, there's going to be a connection with the Father. I mean, I can hear one of the hired servants saying this or the Holy Spirit or an angel, any messenger, whatever. And when you get this in you, there's going to burst forth between you and the Father the greatest feast and merriment that you could ever imagine instead of just you being a prodigal trying to get hold of God way up there. Amen? Um, so I wrote this. <clears throat> Speaking of, you know, well, the son, the son was in the prodigal. But he had to look at the altar and the sacrifice to understand the son that was now his life. Because somebody could have just told him, the son is in you. And he go, okay, I believe that. And I, I, he's been revealed in me. And I thought I was great before, but now I'm even greater. And greater is he that's in me. Anybody remember my sharing on that and what the true meaning of that is? <clears throat> Um, he saw, he, he had to, the sun was in him, but he looked at the altar and he looked at the sacrifice and he did that with the father leading him into that so that he would understand the son that is now in his life. And also the relationship that he has with the father now is now based on this son, not me son, the son instead of me son. I'm so poetic. <clears throat> Not, that's a joke, and that's why we laugh. <clears throat> All right, John, Gospel of John, chapter 6 and verse 54. <clears throat> Did you just hold up another one? No. Okay. What I'd like for you to do is get some little pins or something, and every time you hold one up, throw it at me. <clears throat> She's... <laughs> I didn't say tomatoes, Jeff. <laughs> I bought Deb some little, some little metal magnet darts, <laughs> and they stick. Yeah, that would work. Oh, yes. How much time? I'm wasting it even now. All right, this is uh, John 6, verse 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Okay. First is the same thing with the prodigal son. You have to eat the sacrifice. And it's not just Jesus standing there that, that it's the understanding is. It is when he is in broken bread form and he has poured out blood form. That's what communion represents. We go, oh, communion is holy. Not if you don't do the real deal. But anyway, nonetheless... Um, uh, but that first part is to take him into you, to eat him, to, 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 to assimilate him. And assimilate is more than hearing a sermon. It's even more than seeing something in the Word. I, I know this for a fact. I mean, almost any subject I share on, I do not just get it from the Lord and then go share it. You'll never know how much time I spend chewing and soaking and, and letting him reveal depth, uh, another layer of that, because if you don't, then you say, this is it. And I've got things, I've been, big things, I've been chewing on for over three years now and still have not shared them. <clears throat> okay, so who, who's eating my flesh and drinketh my blood? Hath eternal life. This is eternal life. Not to just be saved. I believe in that. See, okay, consider the altar like the cross or representing the cross. And, you, and the prodigal son goes up there and goes, I believe in that. I believe in that. I believe he died for me. I believe that he wants the best for me. I believe that da 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 and he does all this stuff. And he's still the prodigal, so he's going to pervert every ounce of that. 
We cannot allow that in ourselves. <laughs> we cannot allow that in ourselves. <clears throat> I will raise him up, and I will raise him up at the last day. It said him, not them. It's his body. It's, it's him. He's not talking about a universal resurrection here. He's talking about a one resurrection. When you become and when we all become one based on the one that lives in us, not based on the theology of oneness. It's important to him. This is, let me tell you, it's the only reason why I emphasize this stuff is because it's important to God. I, it's not, it's not, I don't have a pet peeve. I have a, a Holy Spirit that won't let me up. And that's the truth. <laughs> um, so, I will, I will raise him up in the last day. So he's not talking about his occupation as resurrector. He's not. He's not talking about his, his I, I, am, I am resurrector. I will raise you up. You know, through my mighty power, my transformer, transforming power. <laughs> no, no, no. It's talking about a living union with the resurrection based on what? Your death. You, what you see in the altar, what you see in the embers, what you see in the, the blood poured out, what you see. And what you see is not just a fatted calf. You see a skinny you. I don't know where that came from, but anyway. Some of you going, oh, thank God. <laughs> this will make you pursue the Lord. I'll use whatever means possible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it's, remember, it's a lively hope. It's a living hope. You have to remember that. And that hope is dangled before Christians. That hope is dangled before prodigals. We're all prodigals. We are, you know. And you can counsel a prodigal till you're blue in the face. You know how I know that? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And it will do no eternal change, but eternal life. See, eat my flesh. That is eternal life. And you're coming with me. That's a little paraphrase that I worked on for about three seconds there. <laughs> okay. Um, so... So how are we supposed to live this union then? And this is uh, Isaiah chapter 9, if you'll turn there with me. I think uh, Scott referred to this fairly recently, or maybe it was Mike Gentry. I know That's right. I know Mike Gentry did because... About two weeks before he did, we shared in the office about this subject. <clears throat> Isaiah 9, 6. A child is born, but a son is given. All right, now I don't know what, how, you know, we got so many different Bibles and translations and anything. But how many of you, the word son is capitalized? There you go. Nobody else? Good. It's, this, it's mainly this side. They have the son that's capitalized. And I'm with you guys, and I just want to talk to you all now. We'll get with the prodigals and the elder, and the elder sons later, okay? <laughs> um, a child, well, no, okay, here's the deal. 
This is the one that's quoted in the New Testament about the birth of Jesus. So who do you think the son is? <laughs> okay. Whether it's capitalized or not, it's still speaking of Jesus. All right. <clears throat> so um, there's that word child. Remember, that's the word that, I, I, although this is Hebrew and he spoke in Greek, that's the word that the elder son was called. Oh, immature one, you know. Um, and the son here is speaking of the son, okay? It's speaking of the son. And there is a progression from our quote unquote sonship into the son. <clears throat> All right. Now, there are people who have discovered this reality of, of, of Christ being the son in us and us relating to God as the father and it becoming an actual revelation and a, and a big deal. But they call it sonship and they call it, they say, the, and they use this kind of terminology, well, you know, um, I'm a son of God. Okay. But you know, Jesus really didn't walk around saying I'm a son of God. He said God is my father. You say, well, it's the same thing. Mm, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. One is emphasizing you and the other is emphasizing him. One is emphasizing the relationship based on him. And the other one is, I've entered into a special, deep relationship. No, if you enter into the son, he is your union with him and his relationship with the father will come out of you because he's living in you. You assimilated him, and he comes out of you crying, Abba, Father. Amen? And that's, that's the goal. You know, and that scripture that I'm quoting from is Galatians 4, which we've talked about before. And, you know, as long as, uh, you know, as a, a son, he, a child, he differs nothing from a servant, though he's Lord of all, though he's in the family, though he's an heir, but he's, you know, he's an heir, but he's still young. He's still a, he's an airhead <laughs> instead of a son. <laughs> and so this, um, this relationship has to, as it were, metamorphosis, which that word is used, you know, into the sacrificial Son. Okay, so how's it help me now? Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. What is, how's that go? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind, and that you be a living sacrifice. Okay, the metamorphosis is the transformation is into this sacrifice. Is, is the prodigal seeing the sacrifice as the son and going, this is who he is in me. Yeah, it's the revelation. It's the, it's the transformation. It's the renewing of the mind that you become a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service, which actually is translated the highest form of worship because it is being offered in a lamb nature, which is the highest form of worship you could ever, because it's a sweet savor to God. Way better than just waving your hands, <laughs> even sincerely. Way better. It's the highest form of spiritual worship. The lamb in us, the, the functioning in us to such a degree that we are Living, it's a living hope, but we're living sacrifices. And that, my friend, is the son. A child is born, but a son is sacrificed. When God said, I know what time it is here, when God said uh, he gave his only begotten son, that word gave is the same word of give as unto sacrifice. Same, same 
word. And, and that's what it's Galatians, I mean, uh, uh, John 3.16 is talking about, that he gave his only begotten son. It's not talking about an incarnation there, but he says like a serpent held up on a pole. It's talking about the giving of his son as a sacrifice. And we partake of that. We, we chew on that. We, uh, and then we swallow it. <laughs> we chew on it and then we swallow it. We don't just soak on it. We, we eventually take it into ourselves. And when we've taken it in, our eyes will, being in light, will be enlightened and we will see the Father in a completely different light, in a completely different relationship. And Abba, Father, will come out of us because it will be, because you are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying that. You're, because you're born again, and you've come to this place of maturity, and maturity is simply recognition of the Christ that is our life, the Son that is our life at the altar. And then, and then we shall talk about next time. Stay tuned for an exciting next adventure <laughs> of, of this cliffhanger as we move on. All right, bless you guys. Love you. And pray for us.